Hi, Brian. Uh, I was going to ask you how you thought Michael Dieter played in his three starts at center before the injury, and is he ready to resume his role as your starting center against the Giants? Um, I thought he played well early in the season. I mean, it's, it was a while back now. Um, but, yeah, we were we – were, uh, it was unfortunate that he got injured, but he's worked his way back. Obviously, he practiced last week. As you know, Barry, and um, we'll just kind of got to see how how I thought he did uh, some good things last week in practice. Um, obviously, it wasn't wasn't um, ready for us to call him up, but we'll just see how we'll take this one day at a time and see how he uh, how he practices this week. And but he's he's uh, he's 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 working his butt off to get back out there, and uh, he'll he'll try to get out there as soon as he can. Great. And one other quick thing from me, just Fuller and, and Devontae, do you expect either to be able to practice fully this week? Again, you know, with, with both those guys, uh, it's no different than than where we're at this time last week. I think, you know, we'll see on, on Wednesday. Um, both, you know, obviously, you know, getting better, um, getting closer. Um, we've got workouts today and tomorrow, which will tell us a little bit more. We're kind of those, we're, we're there yet. And, um, We'll make the best decision for each one of those guys individually in our team. Thanks. David Fronis. Hey, Flo. Uh, this rookie class has really come along, and yesterday was a great example with uh, Jalen, Jalen, and uh, Javon all making plays. Uh, is, is there a common thread in uh, something about them, their work ethic, anything like that, or um, you know, anything uh, you can say about uh, what's led to this? And I think all the guys you know, in, that, in the rookie class, and I would say all uh, all the guys on our team, they work hard. Um, football is important to them. They're team first. You know, those those guys are they're, they're tough. They're competitive. They enjoy playing with one another. They support each other. They work at it every day. They study film, and they've gotten better. And I'm, I'm confident that they'll they'll continue to get better because they'll continue to put the work in and and and, uh, and they're they're all sponges. They wanna they wanna get better. They wanna learn. They wanna improve. They wanna help our team. Tim Reynolds, Brian, along the rookie lines, um, they've had a mini camp. They've had training camp. They've had 12 games, <laughs> meetings, film, all that stuff. Is there a point where rookies? aren't really rookies anymore. I mean, are, is, is there a point where you kind of, you're a rookie for your whole first year, I get that, but is there a point where you kind of shed the tag inside the building? Uh, no, they're rookies. They're rookies, they still got you know, a long way to go, a lot to learn. Um, I think, I think you learn, this is kind of the point in the season where it gets really different for them. You know, college seasons are really over right now. Um, so there's 12 games. And I think we can all kind of reasonably understand that. There's 12 games in college. Now there's, you know, we're in 12 games and we got um, a lot of season left here. So this is where it becomes, uh, you know, the season's longer, there's more hit, there's, it's, it's a more physical game. Uh, it's more taxing uh, in a lot of ways. Uh, Mentally, physically, emotionally. Um, so, yeah, they're 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 certainly still rookies now. Um, and this is, you know, while they they played football, uh, I would say this this long. Um, you know, in college, I think next week is the uh, college championships or the conference championships. I would say, um, you know, this is kind of where you know the 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 uh, the length of the NFL season differs from anything that they they dealt with. So. Yeah, uh, they're, 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 they're certainly still, still rookies. Brian, along those lines, though, it is if, if you stack the two side by side, yeah, their seasons would be done if they were in school. You know, I mean, the numbers are one thing, but they look like they just played their best games, too. Like, how are they finding ways to get the most? I mean, they've never gone through a season this hard, this long. What's it say about them that they're able to put up their best numbers at this time of year? You know, I, we try to take things one game at a time. Um, it says that they they're working hard. It says that they're taking advantage of their opportunities. Um, 
but you know, specific to your question about them being rookies, um, I would say they still are because they've never experienced you know this this next part of the season. Omar, good morning, Flo. Uh, well, good day. Um, earlier today, uh, Jalen Phillips said something that I found kind of interesting, profound. I don't. I'm, I want to know if you can help me with the origin. Of, he said, "We say cut your own grass. Don't worry about your neighbor's yard." Obviously, that means you know, do your job, do your assignment. I'm, I'm assuming that's what it means. If you, if you can elaborate, um, is that a you saying? Is that a Josh saying? Is that and where did you guys get it from? You found that to be profound? Yeah, I did. Sometimes I cut my neighbor's yard. Do you? I do, actually. I, I like mowing lawns. You're a nice guy. You're a nice guy. I got some grass if you want to. <laughs> I don't have the setup to move my equipment. So um, uh, where, where think, does it? I think it means just, you know, uh, handle your responsibility, your assignment, your communication. Uh, basically do your job and let's not don't worry about what the other guy's doing because the other guy's going to do his and if we, we get enough guys doing uh, handling their business handling their responsibility um, you know and everyone trusts that everyone you know the guy next to him is going to do what he's supposed to do then um, and then that'll make it as hard as possible for our opponent um, and even then sometimes everyone does do their job and you know, the opponent makes a play um, but you know, we don't want to give it, give them, give them anything because you know we didn't take care of our, our my, I didn't take care of my individual business. Now you guys were adamant about doing that defensively earlier in the season. I guess it, it wasn't happening. People weren't just doing their job. At what point do you think that message sort of hit home this season? Because I know it wasn't an issue too much last season. But when did it hit home with this team? I mean, I think it's always something we put an emphasis on. Uh, look, each game is different. Um, so, I mean, I think, I think, I think it's something our guys are always trying to do. They're always trying to you know, handle their responsibility, do do their uh, whatever whatever is asked of them on a specific assignment. Just doing it more consistently now. Um, you know, when it hit home, I I can't say. Yet. The time I'm, I'm kind of just focused on right now and where we're at and trying to play play uh play good solid football across the ball offensively def offensively defensively in the kick. Brian Dunleavy, New York Post. Hey Brian, can you hear me? Yeah, I got you, Ryan. Hey, thanks for taking take, thanks for taking my question. I was wondering if you could take me back, Brian, to. Uh, it seems kind of unusual. Yeah, I know you guys are all friends, but it seems kind of unusual for a head coach to let his coordinator under contract interview with another team. So I was wondering if you could take me back to why you let Patrick Graham do that uh, and what you see from him now that he's running the Giants defense. Yeah, I mean, look, Pat and I are good friends. Um I would say, you know, we, we share an office together. Um, we've had our, our, our spats. Uh, our wives are best friends. Our kids hang out. So, you know, Pat's, Pat's a, a great friend of mine. Uh, you know, from a football coaching standpoint, you know, we're, we're more brothers than anything. Uh, so I have a lot of respect for him. Um, and, you know, I would never stand in the way of, of somebody doing something they wanted to do. And, you know, that was something Pat wanted to do. And, and I have a lot of respect for him and his family, and that's 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 something that uh, and I support him. I support him on that on that uh in that in that situation, and I'm always going to support him. So, uh, but you know, Pat and I are, are uh, that's my man, fifty grand, as many would say. So, uh, a lot of respect for him and Joe and Jerry. Travis. Hey, Coach, good afternoon. I wanted to ask you about Philip Lindsay, obviously arriving Wednesday, and he's heavily involved in the run game, pass game, had some great moments in pass pro as well. What does it say about your offensive staff to be able to turn him around and get him ready for a game just three days after he got here to have that big of a workload? I think, uh, I think you know, Eric did a great job, uh, you know, getting him ready. We had a small package for him. 
um, let's call it you know, eight to ten plays. Um, you know, Philip was on top of it. We probably probably could have given him you know another eight to ten plays, and he would he would have got it all down. Um, we spent a lot of time going through it. They walked through. They met. They walked through some more. They met some more. They worked ball handling with the with the quarterbacks. They went through the protections. They walked through it. They went through it some more. They, so he was. Uh, they spent a lot of time on it, um, and that's just a credit to Philip and his his commitment to getting it getting it right. Um, and uh, you know Eric getting him coached up and ready to go, um, and then putting him in the game. And, and uh, I thought he did some good things, and hopefully we can build on last week. Thanks, Coach. Dan from the Athletic. I'm sorry, I don't know how to pronounce your last name. <laughs> uh, Doug, and yeah, it's all good. Hey, Brian, uh, I was wondering if you could talk a little bit about your relationship with Joe Judge and, uh, you know, any memories that stand out from your time together in New England? Uh, Joe's another good friend. Um, you know, spent time in New England, obviously, as you all know. Uh, again, you know, our wives are friends. You know, my son and his daughter were in the same pre-K class. So, I mean, this is uh, – you know, we're talking about people I have, you know, great relationships with. Um, but on Sunday, we're going to compete. I think uh, that's what I expect from them. That's what I know we're going to get from them. That's what they know they're going to get from, from us. Uh, a, lot of, a, lot of, a lot of great memories. Uh, I'm not going to, you know, kind of divulge those right now, but um, definitely someone I have a lot of respect for. Maybe, you know, obviously maybe not this week, but outside of this week, you guys are both, you know, first time head coaches, similar points of your career. Do you guys compare notes and, and stay in touch a lot? Yeah, we stay in touch. Um, but I think, you know, those conversations about, are about you know, our wives, our families. Um, you know, occasionally there's, you know, obviously always something, something, you know, football related that we can get into a situation or something like that. But um but yeah, most of the time it's 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 not really with football at the at the forefront. Um, you know, I think I would say you know we're friends first. So same thing with Pat. Same thing with Jerry. Thanks, Daniel. Uh, good afternoon, Brian. Uh, I wanted to ask. Yesterday's win was um, your your tenth win as a coach in the month of November. Um, I know back when you were in New England. I mean, those those teams had a lot of success in the the second half of the season. I mean, as a coach, I mean, how do you how do you get your players ready for that stretch run? And obviously, with you guys starting the way you did, I mean, how are you as a coach able to kind of turn the tide and get them to play uh, their best when it really counts later in the season? I just try to take it one day at a time and. You know, try to improve and get better. I know that gets you guys probably get tired of hearing that, but um, I think that's I think the only way to get that improvement is to talk about it every day. And I think if we you know just continue to come in and prepare the right way and uh, work the right way in meetings and walk through and practice. And you will you will you know, make those improvements and and over time I think you know hopefully you play better but there's a lot that goes into it whether it's you know playing discipline or uh, you know being able to uh, you know change game plans or shift the game plan there's a lot that goes into that. Um, there's a lot of kind of things you got to, from a foundational standpoint, that you, you have to have in place in order to um, to make certain adjustments kind of later in the season that you need to make. And every team deals with that. But, you know, in order to, to make those, you just got to, on a day-to-day -day basis, try to get better. Thank you. And, and a quick follow-up, um, you know, in talking to Javon and talking to Jalen, I mean, they, they really stress – um, how much of a team bond that there is as a coach. I mean, do you see that maybe whether it's on the practice field or in meeting rooms and how do you think that maybe translates uh, to the field and how you guys have been able to turn things around? I mean, I think that's important. Uh, I'm happy to hear those guys say that something that, you know, I think it's, it's important to me. I think that's, you know, that camaraderie, those, those bonds. I mean, that, that, you know, that mean that means something, you know, 
in game that you can trust the guys that are next to you. And I think that's something you can definitely certainly build on. And uh, it's, it's nice to hear them say that. Um, I think it's something we try to, that's the kind of culture we want to have here. And uh, I think when people, I hope when people watch us, they see a group that supports each other, that enjoys playing together. And, uh, just got to keep preparing and try to try to keep uh, keep preparing and you know, give ourselves an opportunity to 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 play well. All right, last question, Hal. Brian, I was going to ask you uh, something that was touched on a couple of questions ago. Regarding uh, Lindsay, um, I'm wondering if there's anything more you can tell us about where you plan to go from here with Philip. Um, what will be the focus for him this week as he incorporates himself into the offense? And can you see a, a point where this becomes an open competition? Uh, you know how we'll just kind of take it day to day. Um... You know, I think there's more, there's so much for him to uh, to learn from a playbook standpoint, from a uh, just, you know, getting to know his teammates standpoint. I mean, this is, um, I think, I think, but, you know, yeah, he'll certainly have an opportunity. Um, and I think you know, what he shows us in practice, what he shows us in walkthroughs, what he shows us in meetings. Um, we feel like he can help us. You know, we'll, we'll try to put him in positions to do that. Um, I think Miles and both Miles and Savan and Patrick have have helped us as well. So um, you know, we'll just you know, add him to the mix and uh, try to try to try to uh, you know put him and really you know all of our players in the best positions to to play well. This is the